Good afternoon guys, welcome back to Maverick Baking and welcome back to the most exciting, most thrilling, most breathtaking, most white knuckle riding time of the month. <laughs> it's the Degusta Box video! So if you are new to this series or new to the channel or you've just never really bothered to watch these videos before, this is the Degusta Box, a mystery box full of various kinds of foods, ingredients, sauces, drinks, snacks, shite, whatever you want. <laughs> Please also forgive me for the several different skin tones I have at the moment. When Scottish people and the sun meet in the sort of late stages of spring and early summer, our skin just becomes a patchwork mess of white, red, pink and every shade in between. It's a look. Anyway, as always, when we open up our box, there's a whole load of vouchers and papers and things that I can't see because I don't have my glasses on. And there is also a sheet that tells us everything that is inside the box, what we can do with it, how much it costs. But again, we like to keep things a surprise, so adios. Let's see what the first product out of the April Degusta box is. It is these London Flavours British Street Food Teriyaki Crisps. I think we've had some kinds of crisps from this brand before. I think it was the more kind of basic British flavours of cheese and onion and salt and vinegar. These are street food inspired teriyaki flavour. I don't think I've ever had a teriyaki crisp. I'm not particularly a crisp kind of guy. <coughs> that smell hasn't convinced me either. I don't know why it's called London flavours when the flavour is teriyaki, which is notably Japanese. Um, so they're a decent kind of colour. They look nice and crispy. They smell of pure soy sauce, which could be interesting. Let's see how they taste. That's actually quite good. At first, it's very salty. Big kind of punch of soy sauce, that umami flavor. But then it does kind of fade into sweet and even a little bit meaty, but they are pretty good. Anyway, let us move on. Our second product out of the April Degusta box is, <laughs> if you're new to this series, this box is a surprise. Some of those surprises are good, and some of those surprises are a plastic tub of soup. <laughs> so this is Heinz cream of tomato soup, but in a pot instead of the tin that we're used to having it in. Why? I don't really know. It says microwavable at the top, but surely, surely to God, they haven't decided to take out a whole new range of the same product just in different packaging to make it easier for people to save time between taking it out of a tin and pouring it into a bowl before they microwave it. Surely we haven't lost that much faith in the ability of the human race. And it's more plastic, which I thought was kind of what the planet was working away from. I will eat this because I think everyone likes tomato soup. I also, I can't stress enough how unnatural it is for a Scottish person to say the word tomato like that. If, if I wasn't on camera, it would be tomato. Anyway, yeah, tomato soup is meh. Next, we have another product from Heinz and it's, um, it's a tin of beans. So this is the organic version of the classic Heinz baked beans. If you are British, you will know all about baked beans. If you are one of my American viewers, you might also be familiar with canned beans in the sort of weird sugary sauce that they come in. They're a staple. Don't really want it in my mystery food parcel, but hey, that's what it is. Thanks, Heinz. Next up, we have some kind of drink in here. And this is Cracker Drinks Mango and Passion Fruit Fruit Juice Drink. Now, I think I've had this before. I think we've had this in the box at some point. Obviously, it would be better chilled, but you know what? I'm lazy and I want um, some juice because it sounds delicious. Hell yeah. So super, like super sweet. A little bit of tanginess from the mango there. It's very nice, very refreshing on a nice sunny day like this. Very happy to receive that. Better than a tin of beans anyway. <laughs> so also in this month's box we have whatever this is. Oh, you were doing so well until the title. Okay, so this is hashtag not guilty bites by the skinny food company. Kill me. These are high protein white chocolate crispies. They're gluten-free, low in sugar and high in protein. You know what, that sounds fine. Don't call it a not guilty bite, let alone a fucking hashtag not guilty bite. Never feel guilty 
about anything that you eat unless it's a part of another human being is kind of the way I live my life. And to call yourself the skinny food company, just stop, sis, just stop. These sound delicious and they probably will be delicious. I just hate the way that brands have to market themselves as some holier than thou treat just because some of us like to eat a Snickers bar every now and again. Anyway, okie dokie. So, we open it up. It smells like white chocolate. So we take out one of our hashtag not guilty bites and it's basically a tiny little crispy white chocolate thing. I don't know how good a view you'll get there. Let me get my fat head out of the way. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's gonna be okay. The product certainly isn't as terrible as its name or its branding. I'll give them that. So these are made from soy protein crispy things. You might have seen some of those if you watched my recent Loaded Legends protein bar review. They're okay. There is a very, very, very thin layer of white chocolate on the outside. So it is just a little bit of that kind of creamy, sweet white chocolate taste, but then it just kind of fades into this fairly bland, crispy snack. It's fine, you know, as a high protein thing, it's certainly not the worst high, pre high protein snack I've ever tasted. It's also not the best. I don't know if I'd recommend it, it also looks like it's gonna be expensive, but you know what? It's decent. Let's move on. So we also have <sighs> Slim Rice, designed to be used as sushi. It's nine calories per 17 grams, which is just a horrific measurement, really. It helps you lose weight. It's reduced calorie, gluten-free, sugar-free, fat-free, salt-free, and probably joy-free. So I think the idea is that this is ready-cooked rice that is made from a kind of weird Frankenstein combination of sushi rice and konjac flour. Konjac flour, I believe, comes from the root of this kind of strange Asian vegetable, which is basically very starchy, but super low in calories, which means that you can kind of manipulate it into other foods like pasta, rice, noodles. So it's gonna be extremely low in calories, but I've also heard that products like this have really strange textures and pretty terrible tastes. <laughs> mm -mm. Let's move on. 80 tea bags. Not really, not really anything else to say there. It's just, it's just a pack of 80 tea bags. <laughs> Moving on again. We have this love corn in smoked barbecue flavor. Howdy! Just so you know, we're a delicious, gluten-free, vegan, smoky, premium roasted corn snack. P.S. We're crunchy. We're delicious. Ooh. Ooh. They weren't kidding about smoky. Very smoky. A good kind of amount of salt and stuff on there. Very crunchy, but it does also kind of stick in your teeth a little bit. I don't know if I would personally eat these as a snack. I know some people would but I think these might also be nice as a kind of topping for something. If you threw these on top of some soup or on top of a salad for just a little bit of extra texture or something, yeah, they're fairly decent. Moving on to another barbecue themed thing. We have in here a bottle of Bullseye New York Steakhouse barbecue sauce. Um, no, I'm quite excited to get this. I think everyone loves condiments and it's always nice to try a new one. Moving on. So we have a few more products in here. One of them is a very large bottle that I think is made of glass. So in this bottle, we have Robinson's Pressed Pear and Elderflower Fruit Cordial. Now, everyone loves a bit of cordial. In the summertime, British people kinda get enough of the cordial. Uh, I'm not super big into elderflower because I'm not rich, but... <laughs> oh, it smells very good. It smells very pear-y. Obviously, I'm not going to drink it straight because I'm not a mad woman, but I will enjoy diluting that with some water later. Water later, later water, water later. Um, yeah, sounds good. Next up, we have some kind of bar thing. So this is a Pachamama. Okay, so it's inspired by Andean superfoods. So I'm guessing Pachamama is a reference to Machu Picchu? Don't really know what that has to do with a protein bar, but there we go. Basically, any buzzword superfood you've ever heard of is inside this bar. I do kind of like the packaging. It feels like it's gonna be okay. It's probably going to taste a lot like every other date-based protein snack bar that you've ever tasted, just as they all look the same. They just kind of look like a rectangular smooge of 
healthy stuff. It smells like dates. Tastes like dates. That's um that's that's not ideal. That's not great. Wow, remind me to never buy one of these. <laughs> Very thick kind of stodgy texture. I can show you there. The main kind of flavor does come from the dates, but it's also weirdly not that sweet. It has this kind of usual healthy, earthy flavor, a little bit of bitterness from the cocoa. Not great. It tastes like something a doctor would prescribe. It's that healthy. Yeah, steer clear of that. Okay, we have two products left in this month's box. And the first of those two are these wild strawberry candy kittens. Now, I have loved candy kittens whenever I have tried them. It's a very kind of swanky, expensive sweets brand here in the UK. So they are gourmet sweets and they are also entirely vegan, which means there's no animal products, there's no gelatin or any weird kind of binding agents that comes from the depths of a cow, <laughs> which, you know, which is good because it's inclusive, it's gluten-free and all this kind of stuff, but it still tastes good. So I don't think I've had the strawberry flavor before. I believe I've had the pineapple and the blueberry. So let's try us some vegan sweets. Wow. It smells like a strawberry milkshake. They are also very adorably shaped like tiny kitten heads. Um, I'm not usually into eating kittens. Don't make a pussy joke. I'm not usually, <laughs> but today we are eating it. So let's see how these candy kittens are. Mm. Gorgeous texture. Sometimes sweets can be really kind of hard and it takes you forever to chew them and they stick to your teeth and it's just, it's not a good time. These are chewy and soft. So they kind of half melt as you're eating them. The kind of sugary coating on the outside has a bit of citric acid in there. So there's a nice kind of sourness, even though it's really sweet. My mouth is literally watering for more now. <laughs> Great strawberry flavor, like enough kind of balance between natural and artificial strawberry flavor. They are so good. Very impressed with those. Finally, our last product in this month's Gusto box is a reliable box of Oat Cheerios. I can't do the shake thing as effectively. <laughs> so, goodbye box. Um, so these are Oat Cheerios. They are high in fiber, no artificial colors or flavors, blah, 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 blah. These are different because they are made with 81.6% oats instead of the usual wheat, corn, oat, and barley mixture, I think. These just seem to be oat and a little bit of wheat starch to kind of bind it. Bit weird, because I thought these might have been aimed at the gluten-free market, but obviously not. And oats are very high in fiber and they have a lower kind of glycemic index if you're into that kind of sugar management stuff. Other than that, they sound fairly identical to normal Cheerios, except they probably have less sugar or something boring like that. In fact, let's just open it and take a handful because cereal always tastes better when it's eaten outside of the usual breakfast time hours. Something that is quite disappointing is that they don't look the same as normal Cheerios. Normal Cheerios are kind of four different colors and they're shiny, whereas these are very kind of bland and wholesome looking. They kind of look like something you'd feed your guinea pig. It kind of tastes like it too. Once you start to chew them, they are kind of sweet. They're a little bit more dry and less sticky than regular Cheerios. And you definitely get more of that kind of oat flavor. Thankfully, whatever they've flavored it with or however they've toasted those oats does actually give them quite a good flavor. These with some milk or with some yogurt might be nice. Mind you, it says that this is perfect with warm or cold milk. I'm not having cereal with hot milk. That's just a no. Anyway, that box had a lot of stuff in it. Only half of it was good, but you know what? I can live with that. We have some new cereal. We have some new sweets. We have some tasty juice. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this month's Degusta box. And as always, there will be a link to where you can get your very own Degusta box, whether you want a one-off kind of mystery box or a subscription so that this surprise stuff arrives at your house every month. Thank you guys as always for watching. And I'm afraid that's all I have time for today. So I will see you for the next one.